In this part four of the video series, we're going to show the steps that we need to perform both in Curator as well as in Palo Alto to get the use case defined in the part three of the video in which we want an offense to actually indicate Palo, the data IP that it's communicating to the outside, we want to block all content. We start by actually creating the rule that fires on that. And in my case, I, I had a rule in my demo system that actually uh, I just modify slightly to do that. It is this one, which is from the RFISI package. Let's take a look at it. What we have is that when a connection is from local to remote, it's going out. And when the destination IP that you're going is in this botnet command and control IP, which we get from a stick and taxi feed, and I'll show it uh, later. Um, when that happens, so you got a bad, bad IP here, what we want to do is not only fire an offense, we contribute here to this uh, uh, with a sense value of 100 to the UBA, the user behavior analytics tool, to reflect that action. But the, the key part that I actually uh, modified in the rule is this one. We add the destination IP, that bad IP, we add it to a quarantine IPS dash IP reference set. Okay. So let's uh, go ahead and take a look first at the at some of those reference sets. So we are here and let's actually see the botnet command and control uh, side. You see this one, I just started the, 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 the machine not too long ago and we have here 70,000 plus IP addresses. Where this came from is from a stick and taxi feed that provide threat intelligence to curator. It can be from the X-Force, it can be Soltra, it can be whatever threat intelligence that uh, speaks stick and taxi. Uh, so we, the, the user is going to go to one of the IPs that is actually in this list. It's a bad IP. You should have not done that. And then the other IP, the other reference set that we uh, actually uh, created is this one, quarantine IP. Okay. So let's actually go ahead and run the events that is, are going to be uh, triggering the actual offense. First, let's go into the offenses to make sure we don't have any, any uh, pending offense. And in the log activity, where we probably have a lot of uh, logs from Palo coming soon because we, we enable those. But let's actually go here and actually where would I have my log run command to replay the logs and, and run this proxy.sh. And this one, you know, actually gets, uh, we, the, that's, we see our rule actually firing in here because the user, the blue code, which is in this particular case, the exit uh, proxy, is actually telling us that uh, that, uh, that rule uh, actually trigger. Let's actually, and there we see some, some Palo Alto uh, locks uh, also coming that these are not related specifically to this particular incident. Now, we should pretty soon see an offense in here. And here it is. And that offense is actually fired on the destination IP 54, 230, 49, And then when we go to the reference set, we'll see that we have that address in that reference set. That's the first part of this exercise. But that's, we, we still need to do a few other things because Palo cannot read the actual reference set uh, data. So, so here it is. Let me move it here. Okay. And we'll see where, where uh, you know, we see that uh, we get the origin text. Uh, we put a time to live of four days. So 
stuff will drop out of the list. But if new one or the new or the same keep on coming, then it refreshes the time to live. But again, this is to make sure that the list does not grow too much, but you can leave, uh, allow it to live forever. So we have the reference set populated with the IP that we wanna knock out. Now, let me show you some commands and there is a link to a public accessible site for downloads where we put those commands so you don't have to uh, type them from, from the screen. So the first thing is, uh, here is a command in, in case that you want programmatically to have the reference set quarantine-ips space ip created. And here you see the time to leave we specify for days. Now, the important piece here is this entry in the cron table where the curator box is, which is actually going to, the first time, create this subdirectory opt curator www, and that's where we will set Palo later to go ahead and read what's in here and basically gets the content of that quarantine IPS with those bad IPs, in our case only has one, so display content dumps that out and then we basically put it into uh, a temporary file here, we do some ch uh, change of permission and we in the in the end we actually move it into uh, this directory www and the file name is called quarantine ips.txt. Let's first go there and take a look at that. So if I go here to opt curator www, we should have in there a quarantine ips file. And there it is. And we can actually show that it has that offending IP. So it was dumped from the reference set into a text file. Now, let's make sure we, we have here, we put here also a command that allows us to make sure that we know that we can access that particular file. So it's accessible and we can actually read it. And that's, pres that's pretty much what Palo is going to do on its end. We have done the configuration that we need here in, in Curator. Now let's go to the Palo side. From the Palo side, on the Objects tab, there is an entry called External Dynamic List. And this is precisely the feature that Palo has that allows us to go and retrieve information from text files. And we define this particular entry Notice that is, this is the IP address of my uh, curator box, and that's the name of the file that we wanted it uh, to list, and we're specifying that that's uh, IP is what it's getting. And we can actually click on this button to make sure that we are connecting to it, and we, we are. So that's the one piece. The other thing that we need to do is define, uh, okay, once I, what do I do with those IPs? And, and we specify uh, two policies uh, to make sure that we uh, quarantine what is actually coming. So we see it says any to any on any user and, uh, and we actually uh, the input is coming from that uh, quarantine object which has the, the IP and what we do is that we reset the connection. And that's in the case that we, you know, that's the source for some reason that when that is the source uh, coming to our uh, any one of our uh, devices is contained on that list, block it. And also, in the other way around, when it's also the destination, when we also want to reset, not block, but actually reset the actual connection. We say, we, we, don't, want it, we don't want you to talk to us at all. If you need to troubleshoot this, I also put a file uh, on that uh, publicly accessible link that allows you to test this from a browser or actually from the command line. In fact, if we SSH into the Palo box, and we 
actually take this and paste it in here is going to yield if the if everything is okay it's going to yield that IP address that Palo will use on that uh, quarantine and here it is the 54253.49.7 that's it no longer you need to uh, have access to the Palo have the the curator guy have access to the Palo uh, administration which might might have some uh, boundary issues but it's also very manual again you don't need to do those commits that may impact the performance uh, some people don't like to do commits uh, during uh, business hours all this is done automatically much faster you get every five minutes Palo goes and retrieves IPs that curator wants it to actually block that's uh, another example of integration between curator and Palo Alto